Hey guys, today I'm going to take a moment to nerd out on something that I'm super excited about. Um, as you guys know, I am a bit of an EDC enthusiast. Um, I believe in survival, I believe in EDC items, I believe in firearms, all that fun stuff. Um, so today we are going to talk about communication. Uh, we're going to be going over ham radios. Uh, very important part of your your home preparedness because when the when crap hits the fan this might be your only form of communication very very important to have in your house before i get started please like and subscribe to my channel if you don't mind uh, also you can support me on patreon uh, my link is down below uh, and you may also click on any of my amazon links and anything you buy with my Amazon links supports the channel as well. Um, I really appreciate it. I've jumped up to over 100 subscribers really, really fast. And I appreciate each and every one of you that took the time to subscribe and to comment and to like my videos. All right, getting into it. This is a handheld uh, ham radio. Now there's three different kinds of ham radios. There's a handheld, there's a mobile that I got over here, and there is also the base station ham radio. Um, now the differences between the three is range. Um, the handheld uh, gets limited amount of range unless it is able to connect to a, re a repeater tower, um, which we'll go over in a little bit. This one goes about, I'd say five miles-ish, five to 10 miles. I think I, with this antenna that I put on it, it goes about 10 miles. The mobile station, this one that I've had in front of me, goes about 30 to 50 miles. I'd say 30 miles max. And then the base stations can get up to quite a distance, like 100 miles or so, depending on what, what setup you have, what antenna you have, and how close you are to a repeating tower. Going over it, this is called the Anytone 878. Now this is one of my favorite um, ham radios because it has the big screen. See if I can get that nice and close. Okay, it has a really big screen. It has lots of nice letters on it um, that you can read. Now, a lot of these ham radios you get just has one little thin line of numbers on it. And I didn't, I didn't really like that. I like to have something I can read, I can scroll through, kind of like a cell phone almost. So yeah, this guy has a bunch, has a big screen on it. It's very easy to navigate. And so today we are going to be going over my handheld um, ham radio. Um, I will do a separate video on my mobile setup that I just keep at the house. I don't... Real quick, before we go down to the table, uh, I did one thing to this Anytone 878, and I put a better antenna on it, a longer range antenna. I'll try to link this antenna um, in the description below. Um, but what it actually comes with is what's called a rubber ducky um, antenna with ham radio. There is a licensing system with ham radio. So you need to be licensed in order to talk on ham radio. If you are not licensed on ham radio, you can still listen to ham radio. So I wanna make that abundantly clear. All right, you can still listen on a ham radio. You just can't talk, okay, be careful. If you are talking and you don't have a code, a, a ham radio licensing code that you you say after each transmission, if you do not say that, there is the ham radio police, the FCC, that will could possibly come to your house and take your radio from you. Um, I know it's very very weird. It's kind of like it's kind of like the ATF of firearms. It's very very. Interesting. On the internet, people swear by them that they actually come to your house and take your stuff. But anyway, all right, let's move down to the table and let's check this handheld ham radio out. All right, just a little brief review and kind of how I've had this Anytone 878 ham radio set up for my use. I have this ham radio set up uh, to be able to contact certain types of groups and to contact certain repeaters that are around in the area, not really contact, but connect with groups or repeaters around the area. Here's an example 
of a repeater that I am connected to. So I have a couple of repeaters in my little area here. Now a repeater is just a tower that takes your signal and it shoots it farther away. So repeaters are really nice, especially if you have a limited range ham radio like I do right here. Um, this radio connects to the ham, to the repeater that's in my town and it shoots it off into the distance where I can get farther, I can connect with people farther away. So a couple of, there's just examples of a couple of repeaters that I have in my local area that I have connected to. Um, sometimes people talk on these repeaters, even though you're not really supposed to talk on the repeaters. You're supposed to talk on the repeater to connect with somebody, and then you're supposed to move off into a different frequency. Um, next one that I have is clubs. Now, clubs are really nice. You can join clubs. Um, I really don't join clubs. I kind of just find the clubs in my local area, and I connect my ham radio to them, and I basically just listen. Now, the reason I do that is because if the grid was ever to go down, I can still contact people through these clubs, even though I'm not a part of these clubs. So there's a couple of local clubs in my area that um, they talk on the radio. They talk like once a week at a certain time during the week on the ham radio. And I can always contact them if stuff were to happen in my local area. Um, there's some national call frequencies for emergencies. Sometimes if you're in a national emergency, you're lost in the wilderness or whatnot, you can go on these frequencies and you can contact these frequencies. Now, all these frequencies are online for you to pick up. You just got to research um, some of these frequencies online. Um, I have some up north repeaters. So when I go up north on vacation and I want to just play around with the re repeaters up there and I want to listen to people or chat with people up there on their repeaters, I can do that as well. Um, there's also national weather station frequencies that you can listen to. And each one of you that's on different parts of the country will have a different um, weather station you can listen to. So like mine happens to be like 7. So they'll tell you like what the weather is. Like So I can also go to the frequency um, tab on here. So this is what most ham radios have. It's just a jumble of letters. Um, especially the ones with a really small screen. All you're going to see is just a bunch of letters. And when you get your ham radio license and you start learning the ham radio licensing part, they'll tell you which frequencies you can go on and which frequencies you can't. So really cool about this Anytone is I can go into the menu here and I can scan all of the radio frequencies and just listen for people that might be on any of these frequencies. And if someone is on one of those frequencies, you can hit, you can stop it and you can listen to what they're saying on those radio frequencies. Pretty cool little gadget here. When you get into this and you want to really listen, I would actually look up on YouTube somebody that actually goes into depth of this. I am not that kind of person. I do this just for fun. I don't really do a complete review of this thing. I'm just showing you the things that I use with this handheld radio. But yeah, really cool ham radio. Um, the battery lasts forever. Um, I have a little charger for the battery on there and it charges the battery really quick. I bring this with me on trips, put it in my backpack on the little um, water pouch and I just, I go, sometimes I go to Florida with it. I go all over the place with it. I took this to Gatlinburg, Tennessee and I have, I just looked up on the internet all kinds of different frequencies in Gatlinburg, Tennessee and I was able to communicate with people out in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It was pretty cool. Pretty fun time. But yeah, this is my personal ham radio that I bring with me everywhere. Um, to most people, they don't really think about EDCing a ham radio, but it is very important to have communication, especially if communication does go down. Ham radio will always be up even if the grid goes down because it's through the satellites. So with licensing, if you are interested in ham radio licensing, all right, I highly recommend buying this book right here. I will link this book down below. I got this off of Amazon. Um, it's just a manual that you can read and you can go, th you can learn the history of it. You can, the concepts, the technology, the frequencies, everything is in here. Um, because eventually if you do do a home, do do, <laughs> um, if you do a home, uh, setup with your ham radio, um, you're going to need to have some sort of antenna. So it's really important that you learn like what kind of antennas do what like diagonal antennas, angular antenna, like all kinds of different things. 
So I recommend reading through, this is how I, because I am personally licensed for ham radio. This is how I did it. And let me tell you, I was green as can be when I started. So I read through this entire book. I kind of skimmed through it. I kind of looked at all the important things in here. I read through the entire book. I know it's a lot of reading. Okay. But after I did that, um, two things I did. I watched a couple of YouTube videos on people that went through this book. So they went through the important things of this book. So I read it myself. I think it's his channel is called Ham Radio Crash Course. I believe that's his channel. He was the one I watched and he went through this entire book and he just highlighted the important things on this book. I think it was like an hour and a half long video, but it was important. He went through a lot of key concepts in here. And then after I did that, if you go on the second page here, it is that www.arrl.org and that brings you to the ham radio license licensing website and on there they have some practice tests for you to take and i tell you what i did that practice test like a hundred times no joke until i knew every single question on that test and when i started like passing it with like 95 to 98 percent I went online, I went on that website again, and I looked for ham radio licensing areas in my my particular area. Now, lucky for me, I did this during COVID, and they did it all 100% online. And so what I did is I paid for the license, which I believe was, I don't know what it was, like, I think back then, because it was COVID, it was only like 60, 40 to 60 bucks or something like that. I have no idea what the price is, price is now, but... Um, what you did is you went online and it was like a little zoom you zoomed in um, you had to make sure that you had um, a camera over top of your laptop and they basically there was four people in there watching you take the test making sure you weren't cheating and now on here i believe if i can find it they had the questions how many questions you needed to have oh here we go so here are some of the license you can get so there's technician which is the one i got which is the the bottom of the barrel uh there's general and amateur obviously those tests are a little bit harder than the test i took so i did the technician exam so you had to get 26 correct out of 35. now if you take these practice tests it's very important not every single one of those questions are going to be on that test so i took that test i would say about 90 percent of the questions 85 percent of the questions were on that practice test that I took online. And there was probably, I'd say a handful of questions that I did not even see, but were in this book. So that's why it's very important that you actually read the entire book before you take the test, because they do kind of sneak a couple of questions in there that they don't put on the practice test. If you're looking to get into ham radio licensing, I do it just so I can talk. I haven't, I've talked a couple times on this one because I had a couple of guys close to me that I have had a couple of political conversations with which is hilarious because uh, most of the people on here are very conservative yeah it is a fun time with ham radio if you are interested in getting into this hobby and it is it is a hobby um, you have to enjoy it in order to get something out of it i mean it's pretty much just like talking on your cell phone but a lot cooler in my opinion and uh, you get a lot of like-minded people i had a couple when i was in gatlinburg i had a couple of uh we did, they had a trivia night one night and they had a ham radio trivia night one night. They had, like, it was a lot of fun being able to chime in, you know, have fun with a bunch of guys that were just having fun up in the mountains. Um, it's really funny as I told them my uh, call sign, uh, my call sign's K-E-8-S-M-I. And they were like, eight, where the heck are you from? And eight, I don't know, the map's in here somewhere. I don't know exactly where it's at, but eight is actually Michigan. And they were like, where are you from? Are you from the upper part of the country? And I'm like, yeah, I'm from Michigan. And they were like, oh, sweet. You know, they are all excited that I was on there, you know, hanging out with them. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of like a little introduction to ham radio. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments. Uh, I will link both of these, this and that, in the, they're both from Amazon, in the, in the description below. So if you want to pick one of these up, please use one of my links because it really does help out on my channel. And uh, yeah, hope you all enjoy the video. Have a great day, everybody.
Peace.